That's why. That's a mind of a lazy person who doesn't do his work. You, you will have to refer back to 15 years. I'm, I've grown up mm. over a period of time, built a solid political party. The only thing you can keep on referring to is what you interviewed me about it 12 years ago. Get something new, my brother. No, I'm very... Show a skill of an, a hard-working presenter who does his research. You can't falter me. Since I've made my mistakes on text when I was very young, when I was almost 27 years old, fixed that problem. Today, I'm a 42-year-old married man with children who has taken responsibility and built a solid party to be the third largest party without the support of white monopoly capital and the owners of the South African economy. You keep on referring to old and old things because you are now beginning to sound like a scratched CD. You have every right to tell, tell me, me of to me, tell me now. you have changed. Tell me of me now. I've been let's in Parliament one, for 10 years. Let's take one particular aspect of your policy positions. Yes. Do you think aligning yourself with Vladimir Putin is going to be good for South Africa? But that's what it is now. South Africa is in alliance with Russia, with India, uh, with Brazil, with China. So why are you asking me as if it's a, some policy that is going to be implemented South Africa right after now. I took over? South Africa is in alliance with Russia now. South Africa right now calls itself non-aligned. In the context of the war, but these are two different things. South Africa is an ally of Russia. Now, the second question is, where does South Africa stand on the war? It says I'm a non-aligned in relation to war, but Russia remains South Africa's friend. So on March 20th, you uh, declared a national shutdown. You tried to shut down the entire economy in the midst of this power crisis. Is that responsible? That is the most responsible thing to do. Do you want me to fold my hands? Do you want me to not do anything? What will history say about me? I'm going to be asked a question, not by you, by the future generation, as to what have you done when South Africa was in a crisis? The most uh, logical thing to do is for the president to resign. Eh? Was it in Britain where we saw prime ministers in, in a short space of time resigning one after another because they realized they were not about to carry the national agenda? The president is not carrying the national agenda. We need a, a government of national unity constituted by all of us who are not driven by political party uh, interest, but the interest of South Africa to resolve this immediate crisis, which will, as, which will affect all aspects of our lives. National unity, yes. you say. You also said at the time of the national shutdown, this shutdown is the beginning of a revolution. No one can stop it. No army can stop it. No police can stop it. Some of your members put out videos threatening to beat up teachers and police if they went to work. One even threatened to beat up pupils if they went to school. And you talk to me about national unity? But that video of a person who was uh, threatening to beat up pupils if they go to school is an old video. I think uh, Hard Talk should have done its research to now realize that video has been resurfaced to support a certain narrative. There's no such a thing. I'm telling you there's going to be a revolution. Let the grid collapse and let's see what's going to happen. Let the this. grid collapse. I'm saying to you. How do you think South Africans are going to feel hearing no, you I'm say saying, that? I'm people saying, who are losing their jobs, no, people you're, who you're, have no, no income you're and you just say... Me. You are misinterpreting me. I'm saying to you, let the grid collapse as it is going to happen and see what's going to happen in this country. I'm not wishing it. I'm saying it's going to happen. And you will see what's going to happen. Do you think that once the grid collapse, uh, people are going to exchange roses with government? People are going to rise. And when they rise, there will not be any leader who will be leading them. There will be leaderless. There will be anarchy. There will be looting all over this country because nothing will be working. So if you think that I was bluffing on the 20th of March, I was just saying to this government, and the people of South Africa, something ought to be done to avoid what is possibly coming, which is going to be 
a leaderless revolution. That's very powerful rhetoric, but the truth is, on 20th of March, according to employers, 70% of workers across the country went to work. One political commentator said that actually the failure of the national shutdown was a, quote, humiliation for Malema. From where we're sitting, the shutdown was successful. Nothing was operating. The South African media was at the public transport, private taxi ranks, at bus ranks. The taxi drivers themselves, the bus drivers themselves have said, we showed up, but there are no people. So if you are going to listen to a desktop, most possibly a racist analysis of wanting to undermine the narrative of the success of the shutdown, then that's your own uh, baby to nest. But the reality is that nothing functioned on that day. You can go to the public broadcaster, mm. you can go to independent media uh, outlets in South Africa to give you the footage of the day, every corner. And what even makes me happy is that even in the rural areas, where normally the revolution never takes place, the people were out in their numbers saying, enough, it's enough. Let's think about the lessons to be drawn from the current crisis, because yes. what we see is a state-operated energy giant which is failing to work. It is not delivering power to the people. We have other major state-operated companies, for example, Transnet in the transport and logistics sector, which are failing the people of South Africa. One, we could look at the aviation sector, all sorts of sectors yes. where the state has failed and yet your message is you still want to confiscate all privately owned land essentially nationalize all privately owned land you want to nationalize the mines you want to nationalize the banking sector and these are the key pillars of south africa's economy so apparently there is this journalist this white journalist he's been traveling to africa uh, disrespecting disrespecting african leaders he's interviewed uh, paul kagame He's interviewed Yoweri Museveni. He's interviewed, uh, he once interviewed, um, who else? A president of Ghana, you know? I'm surprised by how much uh, ignorance our presidents might have to allow these uh, specific journalists to interview them. I'm not saying journalism is a wrong thing. Journalism is a very, very nice thing. Through the journalists is where we can be able to learn about the affairs of the country they can be able to question the presidents and the presidents are, be, are able to bring uh, transparency, are br able to bring light to the information uh, required of them or the information happening. It's important to have a journalist. However, they should know their limits. Le journalists should know their limits. They shouldn't just go um, around speaking anything because they have, given, they have been given their priority. No. These are African heads of states. These are political African leaders. And they should be respected. For this specific video, um, this interviewer, this journalist, interviewed Julius Malema, and I found that he was, dis he was disrespectful to Julius Malema. I'm saying he was disrespectful because I've seen the same journalist interviewing other presidents from their countries, and they showed them the uttermost respect but because a president is an African president, they are not shown the equal respect. A head of state is a head of state. This man is responsible for the lives of millions of people in this country. He should be given the respect. Julius Malema was interviewed by one of these and he was, he was smart. He was, he was able to, to hold it up. You know, in as much as he was disrespectful, this man was able to stand strong. So I want us to continue watching this video, then by the end of the video, I'll give you my critical analysis. You want them all in state hands, and you, Julius Malema, are saying to the South African people, elect me, and I and my associates in the economic freedom fighters will run this economy. Absolutely. You know 95% of South Africa is electrified? Do you know that South Africa gets water today? Do you know that South Africans, they're watching a public broadcaster? All these examples I've given you are state-owned. 
But do you know that, is that, that we have seen this experiment played out in other countries? I'm thinking I, I, of Zimbabwe, I'm thinking of Venezuela, and the model does not look good to many South African people who see it. You no, know, it looks good. We're using it now. We were better off now owning this. It's not like I'm saying, let's go and take ESCOM out of the hands of the private sector. We are owning it already. So, I and then South that. Africans have accepted and are happy with what we're we are owning it already that's and it's a complete mess. Uh, that's why South Africans are saying, let's get proper people to go and run these institutions. Are you, the, are not, are you the proper person? I'm a proper guy. I mean, I don't want to go too far back into history, but at various times you failed to actually file a tax return on time. Yeah. You've been accused of different financial offences. You've never been convicted, yeah. but though some of those yeah. uh, charges were never brought to court. But you tell South Africans, despite your own history, yeah. you are the guy to run their economy. So we cannot create confusion around there. Don't create an impression that it is Malema who's going to come and create an alliance with Russia. But there are some very specific Actually, if, I will, if I may I will say go so. beyond that. I will go beyond the, the friendship with Russia and in the war, I will align with Russia and I will even supply the weapons to Russia. Because Russia is in a war with, with imperialism and any agenda that seeks to push back uh, imperialist agendas, it's well within the policies of the EFF. You say Quite clearly, I would arm Vladimir yes. Putin. Yes. You know that the International Criminal Court wants Vladimir Putin to face war crimes charges. Hmm. It must start with Tony Blair. It must start with George Bush. It must go to Barack Obama. Then it can go to uh, Putin. So, so let's get this so straight. Lesbian, You're saying to me and, that and your, a, your a, policy, a, if you were in power in South Africa, is quite simple that your enemy's enemy, and it seems you regard the US and its allies as the enemy, yes. your enemy's enemy yes. is your friend. Never mind if he's a suspected war criminal, never mind if the UN and the ICC say they have compelling evidence of Russian war crimes. You don't care. As far as you're concerned, my enemy's enemy no, is you, my you, friend. You, you're exaggerating, but, but another point which you don't want me to go there is that um, Tony Blair accepted that they were wrong about Saddam Hussein, uh, to an extent that he did a, an apology of a thug, right? You, you have never called for his arrest. A man admitting that I, as I was wrong. Uh, uh, to How many people died there, uh, uh, killed by those people? So all I'm saying is we are with President Putin because uh, it's not any of my enemy. It is an anti-imperialist agenda that says the American dominance and its allies should be undermined at all costs. Anti-imperialism, even though Vladimir Putin is quite explicit about his desire to revive a form of empire, he says countries like Ukraine have no right to independent sovereign existence. He appears to believe that the best thing would be to revive an empire, the Soviet empire. But you're anti-imperialist? We are anti-imperialist. That's a debate for another day. Oh. The war is not what he's talking The war is about the expansion. And had there been a, a, a common ground found, this could have been avoided. We are not for imperialism, even if it were to come from Russia. If he does that, we'll condemn it. But we know for a fact that progressive forces such as China have also aligned themselves uh, with Putin to try and create an alternative from the imperialist uh, domination of the world. And that's what the EFF is about. You admire China. You admire, it seems, Putin. What you seem to have as a vision for South Africa's future is much more along those lines, authoritarianism, than democracy. No, socialism is not authoritarianism. So, so how can you describe China as progressive? No, it's very progressive. China uh, subscribed to Leninism and Marxism, where uh, the working class controlled the commanding heights uh, of the economy. And that's what we subscribe for. We are of the means of production being owned and controlled by the states. We want South Africa through the vision and the image of China 
where absolutely you can't say you are a revolutionary and then be scared to kill. But once you, you go killing uh, people around, you are a terrorist. When you've got the support of the majority of your people to engage in war, and the majority of the people are with you, that is the revolution, it's not terrorism. And therefore, I'm not a terrorist. I'm, that's why I'm saying, at least for now, the conditions have not dictated that there should be anyone who should go to the bush and engage in war to kill. But if those conditions necessitate, will will without hesitation do that. The same way the generations before us, when conditions necessitated, they were not scared to take up guns and shoot to kill. So I'm not saying uh, anyone must be killed. All I'm saying is, let everybody come to the party. Let's build this one country and give away our privilege but for the it, privilege of question. all. Your vision of South Africa's future, will it come through the ballot box or will it come through what you call a revolution? It will come through the ballot box. A ballot box that uh, uh, produces a revolutionary party will unleash the revolution. And the revolution, when it is unleashed through democratically elected government, is the changing of the system where you radically... Uh, uh, defeat capitalism and introduce a socialist state. We still believe in the EFF, fundamentally so, that the power to the people must be ushered in through the ballot. And nothing else must be looked at except right. the ballot. However, when the need arises to defend ourselves through whatever means necessary, we'll do so without hesitation. So after carefully watching this video, here's my critical analysis. So the relationship between journalists and African leaders, such as Julius Malema, should be characterized by mutual respect, understanding, and collaboration. You know, while maintaining a critical eye, journalists can contribute to a more informed and engaged public by providing balanced reporting, uh, promoting accountability, and respecting the cultural context of the nations they cover. For this case, it was South Africa. So as journalists approach grounded in respect, um, in the ever-evolving uh, landscape of global media, the relationship between journalists and political leaders, including African presidents, plays a crucial role in shaping uh, public discourse. You know, While maintaining a vigilant and critical approach, it is inherent to journalists' responsibility. It is equally important for them, uh, journalists, to approach their coverage of African presidents with uttermost respect. You see? There has to be reasons why journalists should cultivate a relationship based on mutual respect with the African leaders that they are presenting, re recognizing the significance, the significance of reporting, uh, fostering positive communication, and contributing to the democratic process. What is a balanced reporting? Here's how I understand it. Balanced reporting involves Africa uh, involves uh, respecting African leaders, like the way we've seen with the pres with the journalist. Do you think he respected Julius Malema? Um, it's in the gray areas. So respecting African presidents involves providing balanced and unbiased reporting that reflect the complexity to the natural landscape. Journalists should strive to respect a fair and accurate portrayal of leaders, acknowledging their accomplishment, challenges, and political initiatives. Balanced reporting contributes to a more informed public, fostering a nuanced understanding of the political dynamics in African nations. From such videos, I'm hoping and I'm really, really sympathizing with African leaders and they shouldn't allow room for uh, such disrespect to happen. Africans should value uh, their time and space. They should also value who they allow to interview them. For Julius Malema, he was able to become to come out transparent. That is how uh, Julius Malema is. He's always transparent. But for the journalist, uh, in as much as uh, the journalist is doing his journalist work, I find um, he was not respectful as required of him. Uh, by the journalism uh, criteria, if you have something, something like that, of which I believe there is moral code, there is moral conduct that uh, they should have, that 
people should have in their line of work there should be ethics you know uh it's it's good it's good however presidents should learn not to give all their time to people who don't give them the respect they deserve and that's what is about that is that is the message here a journalist approach which is grounded in respect enhances the dialogue between the media and political leaders fostering a more transparent accountable and democratic political landscape in african nation respecting african leaders african presidents is a reflection of a journalistic journalistic integrity journalists play a crucial role in upholding the principles of truth accuracy and fairness by approaching their work with a sense of respect journalists contribute to the preservation of the integrity of their profession this in turn enhances the credibility of the media uh, and fosters a relationship of trust between journalists and political leaders and the public so thank you for watching the video um, i'm hoping that you'll be able to subscribe uh, do check out my patreon become my patreon support me over there also give the video a super thanks and um, see you in the next video and stay African, okay? Stay, stay African.